We pray that your word will speak unto us, even as we look at your presence in form of Holy Spirit in us, dear God, and enforce by coming of Jesus Christ. Father, as I speak your word, I pray that you use me as a vessel. Father, I'm one who is born of sinful nature. I am not worthy before you. But you have seen it right to use me this morning. And so, Father, I surrender before you. Break my heart with what break yours. Dear God, I also pray for the people here, dear God. Father, as they listen to your word, if there is burden in their heart, dear God, may you take it away, dear God. As your word comes, Father, may it empower, challenge, Father, your people, may it bring healing, may it make us what you want us to be this morning. Father, a broken heart and a contrite spirit is what you deserve from us, and that you do not despise, and that is what we bring to you this morning. Come, Father, we invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and reign, for we cannot do anything without you. If we do anything without you, talk about ourselves, dear God. But when your Holy Spirit is here, Father, we surely hear from you. And so we invite you this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray and we believe. Amen. Amen. May you have your seat. I want to take this opportunity to thank God for giving me a chance to stand before you this morning. My name is Olive Njoki Nyaga. And by the grace of God, I am born again. For I know it's not many who have come to see the light. I also want to take this opportunity to thank our vicar for giving me the opportunity to stand at his pulpit. I feel humbled. I also want to thank you, all of you for coming to listen to the word of God. May God open your heart and your heart to have a space for his word. God bless you. So now Ewe bana wa majeshi tusikie Kama huwe ninasi Hatuwezi kutoka haka Hatuwezi peke yetu Enda nasi Si watu? Si watu to find Now, in our reading today from the book of Exodus, just to go a chapter behind, chapter 32, I know if you listen very carefully, it's a reading we have, you've heard over and over again. Uh, it's about Moses. We all know who Moses is from Sunday school. And so when God took them from Egypt, and there were very many miracles that they saw, they came at Mount Sinai, at the desert of Sinai, and in front was the Mount Sinai. And so God told Moses, come unto the mountain to give you the tablet. And he went with Joshua. I know you know that story, right? And so when they went, they left the children of Israel with his brother Aaron. 
uh, from, actually I was reading this chapter and I was, I was laughing, chapter 32, because the people said, they told Aaron, make us a God. As for this fella Moses, actually they call him a fella, as, this, as of this fella Moses, we don't know what happened to him when he went to Mount Sinai. So make us a God that we can worship. And Aaron said, is that what you want? Right. Now take all the gold earrings, the gold earrings from your wives and sons and daughters. And they did that. Then you know what happened? They made a calf. That is Exodus chapter 32. They made a calf and they began worshiping the calf. Make note of this. These are the same people who saw manna come from heaven. They are the same people who saw God make a way in the Red Sea. They are the same people who saw chariot drowning in the sea. Yet yeah, they are the same people who told Aaron, we do not know what happened to this fellow Moses. Make us a God that we can worship. And they did that. Now Moses and Joshua had stayed in the mountain for 40 days. And as they were coming back with the tablet, they heard some shouting, some shouting. And Joshua asked, what is it that I can hear? Is there a war there? But Moses replied, it is not the sound of victory you hear. Neither it is, it is the sound of defeat, but it is the sound of singing that I hear. Because people were singing and worshiping the calf, the idol. And when Moses came, we know what, again, what happened again. He broke down the tablet because he was very, very angry. He could not believe just because of 40 days. And you people, you have started worshiping idols. He became very angry and he broke the tablet. And that ushers us to chapter 33 that was read by Jaquin this morning. Then the Lord said to Moses, leave this place. You and the people I brought out of Egypt. Now God was very, very angry. And remember there's one thing the Bible says, God does not change. His character remains. So though the people worshipped idols, he remained the same. And he tell Moses in chapter 33, leave this place, take these people away from you to the land I promised your fathers, your father Abraham, Jacob, and I mean your father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But I'll send an angel who will go with you and he'll drive out Canaanite, the Jebusite, the Perizzite, the Amorite. But take note of this, Moses, and this is the key. This is our topic this morning. I will not go with you because I might get angry on the way and destroy you there. And I think that is where Ruben Kegame took this song to Naomba Uwepo Wako Uende Nasi. Now, when Moses saw this, at God, what have you said? We should just go alone without you. Then there's no need of going. Remember, this is the Moses who had spoken with God in the burning bush, and he, he would only speak to God concerning the people of Israel. The same God tells him, go, but I will not go with you. If you are Moses, would you have agreed? Would you have agreed if you are Moses? No. Knowing what is ahead of you, even though he says there is an angel, that cannot be the same as his presence. That cannot be the same as, as his spirit this morning. And so Moses went to the tent of the meeting where he used to intercede for the people. And the Bible tells us clearly that the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as the way a man speaks to another man. I don't know even this, if there's any other person in the Bible who, is, who has been quoted as, as talking to God face to face, but we see Moses. He used to speak to God face to face. And so he went in the tent of meeting to plead with God. When I look from chapter 33 from verse 12, I myself, I call this as the greatest argument in the Bible. Okay, there are many arguments you have ever seen in the Bible like when Abraham was pleading with God, when God had said he would destroy Sodom. You remember when, when Abraham was telling God, what if we get 50 righteous people? Will you destroy the city? And God said, no, 
if I get 50, I will not. And Abraham said, what, are, what if you get 45? And God said, no. What if you get 40? God said, no. That is another, at least, I don't know whether it is an argument or pleading. That is from Abraham. There is also the, the, the time of Jacob when he was wrestling with God the whole night. And he told God, do not go until you bless me. I see that like a pleading or like an argument. But in this case of Moses, if you see from verse 12, Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know who you, whom you will send with me. It's like asking, we're speaking a little bit of Kiswahili. Umekua ukiniambia, it's like they are arguing. Like the way a child asks their parents, Ma umekua ukiniambia, dad umekua ukiniambia. Now Moses is setting the basis of his pleading and argument here. Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send me with. You have said, I know you by, na by name and you have found favor with me. Then God, if you're pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this, is na this nation is your people. Moses knew without God's presence, they, they would go nowhere. And that is why he was pleading. And he said, he knew the word because he's telling God, you have been telling me to lead these people, but you have not told me whom to go with. When I think about it this morning, Moses, in those days, in the old covenant days, we know there was no, the Holy Spirit as we know, as we know the Holy Spirit as a person, they did not. That is why he's, he's asking God, whom will you send with me? But today, brethren, today we cannot ask God that. Whom will you send with me? Because the Holy Spirit of God is living in us, with us and in us. Now, in that argument of Moses, Moses asked for six things. He asked for God's presence. Uwe po wa mungu, like Ruben Kegami calls it. He asked for God's guidance. And Moses asked for God's favor. And he also asked God, how will anyone know that you are pleased with me unless you go with me? And the fifth thing he asked is, what will distinguish us, the people of Israel, from other people if you fail to go with us? And we see God answering this argument. And he tells Moses in verse 14, my presence will go with you and I'll give you rest. Again, we see God answering Moses in verse 17. And the Lord said to Moses, I'll do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by, by name. I was thinking of uh, the fathers of faith. Uh, there was one great theologian, those people who, who read about theology, a man called Charles Spurgeon. Charles Spurgeon, uh, people, people call him the prince of preachers because he used to preach to thousands and thousands of people. And at one time when he was preaching in a, in a hall full of very many people, somebody shouted, fire, fire! And people ran, as they ran out, some died. So that one thing gave him anxiety in his period of preaching because people died as he was preaching. And, uh, and because he was an influential preacher in those in the 1800s, uh, there was opposition from the government, there was opposition from the enemies, and there was pain, the, uh, it is said that he had pain in his legs, and so he was suffering from pain, opposition, and all that, and he would sink into great depression. Even the wife is as quoted saying, at, at, at one point she thought, Charles would never speak before people again, he would never preach again, because of the intensity of the depression that he was suffering. But Charles Spurgeon is as quoted as having said, I am the subject of depression, so fearful, that I, I hope none of you will ever get into this. But I always get up again. I know that I trust Christ Jesus. I have no reliance but in him. If I fall, I fall with him. And if he doesn't fall, and also not fall. What Richard Spurgeon did here, 
He acknowledged his inadequacy. He acknowledged his insufficiency. And this is what we see Moses doing here. Trying to tell God, without you, I cannot go. Do not tell me to leave this place to go to the land you promised our fathers. Because without you, God, I'm not adequate. I'm not sufficient. He expressed his vulnerability before God. And that is what even Charles Pajon did. Despite being a great preacher, he expressed his vulnerability before God. His insufficient before God. Now, brethren, this morning, how sufficient are you? How adequate are you that you do not require the presence of God? The Holy Spirit of Father living in us gives us boldness and confidence. And that is what Moses lacked. That's why he could never move from that place. But I thank God because in verse 21, Exodus 3 verse 21, God tells Moses, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. Who is our rock? The Lord, the rock, in him we hide. A shelter in the time of storm. He never leave us ever near. A shelter in the time of storm. They read the Rehab pray because of the calamities in the world, because of the hypocrisy and the mistrust and the uncertainty in the world. Where will you stand? Jesus is the rock in such a weary land. And that is now what God tells Moses. I hope God gives you revelation of this verse. There's a place near me where you may stand on a rock. And Jesus is our rock. And through, by the coming of Jesus Christ, in the new covenant now, we see the Holy Spirit also descended to the disciples. Remember, reminding us today is our Pentecost. Now when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, they were able to do things that they could not have done. They were able to heal, to speak the message of the gospel without fear of even death. And that is what we are being called for, brethren, this morning. In such a world, full of all those things. How bold are you? Not by your power, but enabled by the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, in 2 Corinthians, we know that Paul wrote very many epistles. And one of it, he wrote to the people of Corinthians. The people of Corinth, the Corinthians. And Paul helped in building that church not by his power, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. Enabled by Jesus Christ, who is the power of God, who is the glory of God, who is the wisdom of God, as it is written. Now, after he established the church in Corinth, imagine what people did. Some other teachers started to come in, and they started building some other seats among the Corinthians people. And so, in this... Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. When those teachers came to build those seats among the, the, the people there, they started questioning Paul's authority. Imagine they are questioning the authority of the very person who built that church by the power of Jesus Christ. And so in this letter, chapter 3, Paul is actually defending himself. But they expect him to defend himself by saying, chest thumping, I am Paul. Have you forgotten that I am the great apostle of Jesus among the Gentiles? No, he did not do that. He actually comes with all humility, enabled by Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and says, in, uh, when you read from verse 3 there, are we beginning to commend ourselves? That is what he asked them. Or do we need like some people, now those, those other teachers, some letters of recommendation? And he goes from where it was read by Margaret, verse 4. Such confidence we have through Christ before God. The confidence that I have, I, Paul, 
does not come from me being a Pharisee of Pharisees, because he says that. It does not come from me being just an apostle, but through Christ before God. And Paul goes ahead, and he quotes where we have read about Moses. He says in the time of Moses, under the old covenant, Moses used to have a veil on his face. Because those times it was very fearful to even watch the face of Moses. It was radiating with the glory of God. But here Paul tells them, unlike those days, we have Jesus Christ in us. And his, his Holy Spirit lives in us. And he has enabled me to build the church at Corinth. And that's why I boldly say that where the Lord is, there is freedom. Because he says, behold, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit is, there is what? You don't know that verse? Where the, where the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty. Paul actually did not defend himself by saying how great he was. He just said, it, was, it is only by the presence of God, by his Holy Spirit, I've been able to do what I've accomplished in your church at Corinthian. And he says, since I have that hope in Jesus Christ, I am very bold. Now, let me give you a little story of a missionary called John G. Patton. Uh, I know you know the stories of missionaries. Most of them faced many, many tribulations on the way. Like those who came to Africa, it is said most died because of, out of malaria and a typhoid and I don't know what. Those who went to other places like this John G. Patton, the missionary, went to South Pacific, where we have Australia, the Fiji Islands, and, and such. And so in this place, unlike Africa where there was malaria, there they met cannibals, people who eat people. And two missionaries had already gone to uh, South Pacific, and they were eaten dead on the spot, two missionaries. And so John G. Patton, said, regardless, God has called me and I will go. Whether they are cannibals or not, I will go. It is also said, you know, the aborigines of Australia and the, those people in Fiji, they even used to practice infanticide. That is killing of infants below one year and one year and below. So they had all those malicious things, evil things. And this missionary John Patton said, I'll still go because God has called me. But my difference here is, I am not going alone. I have Jesus Christ, the creator, and I have the Holy Spirit in me who will give me confidence and boldness to go. And he went with his wife. The wife died, uh, and even their child, but he continued. He says, even him at some point, he was no longer sure whether God had called him. Because the cannibals were always looking for him to eat him, to cannibalize him. Even the chief, he says, he says even the if a husband dies and the wife is like, they used to kill the wife so that they meet there with their husband. Because those people, they believed in life after the spirit, but they never believed in eternal life. So when the husband died, they would kill the wife. So John T. Patton realized those people are very superstitious. They believed in spirit and all that, but they never believed in Jesus Christ. Some, some people even told him, those people in those islands, they are not human. They are subhuman. They may not, they will not, they will not get converted. They will not get civilized. Do not go there. But he said, if I'm going alone, then there's no need of going. But if I have the presence of God, like Moses prayed, then I will go. It is said, after some years, it was a success because many aborigines came to Christ. Even Fiji Island now is Fiji for Jesus Christ. Why was he able to do that? Because he never went in human form. Yes, he went, but the Holy Spirit of God actually led him. And so I was asking myself, what do we get? Why was Moses really pleading with God? I cannot go unless your presence with me. What is this presence of God? The presence of God is the Holy Spirit of God living in us. How blessed are we this morning that Jesus Christ died for us and he lives in us. How, how blessed are we this morning that the Holy Spirit of the Father lives in each and one, every one of us. That we can go and hide in your closet and plead with God concerning our country and he will listen. 
And like the times of Moses where him alone would go, even you, you can pray. You can go to your bedroom and kneel down and tell God, remember my children. So where do you need God this morning? Where do you need the presence of God this morning? Is, among your, is it in your children? Your spouse? At your workplace? In the nation of the church? Do you need the presence of God this much like Moses? That you would plead with God again and again that I will not go until you come. Now you have the Holy Spirit of God living in you. What the presence of God, the Holy Spirit of God through Jesus Christ does to us, he gives us confidence. The Holy Spirit of God gives us confidence to do even the impossible. The Holy Spirit of God gives us hope and boldness. Hope in this world where everything is almost dark. And the last thing that the Holy Spirit of God does, now the presence of God is that it, he, he, he gives us liberty, He gives us freedom. And I will leave you with the very verse that Paul told the people of Corinthians as they were questioning him. Now, verse 17, now the Lord is that spirit. The Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I pray this morning, where you feel you have no freedom, where you feel you have no liberty, may the spirit of God give you liberty and freedom in all things. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.